In the finance section of the course, we'll focus on using the Docker and other tools to actually dockerize our application and later on deploy to the virtual machine. We are going to take a look at running services using Docker, the Docker Compose tool, how to store Docker images in our own app, and how to deploy application to the cloud or any other virtual machine that you can think of. In this video, we'll see how to run services using Docker. I will briefly introduce the Docker, we'll create the Docker files, and we'll run our service using Docker. Basically, Docker is a tool that allows us keeping our application in so-called containers. You could, for example, create a new virtual machine that would set up the whole operating system from the scratch. It will take a lot of time, a lot of resources, but you would have a separate environment for hosting your applications or databases and so on. By using Docker, you can do it in a different way. You make use of the currently operating system, for example, the Linux, Windows, or the Mac, and then you put your application into so-called image. And this image is actually, it will be run within this container that actually will be used on your current operating system. And you can have multiple containers that will have all separate environments, but they will be all running, for example, on the Ubuntu server, right? And you can communicate between your containers, for example, using the network, and this network and other features is, of course, managed by Docker. So let's see in action how we can actually start using the Docker with our .NET Core apps. At first, we need to create a so-called Docker file in which we can specify what we want to do, how we want to build our image. Let's create a new Docker file for the API. So I'll just put there a new file and I'll just call it Docker file. And at first, we want to say that we want to use an existing framework to run our app. So I'll just say from Microsoft.NET 2.00 runtime. And this one actually comes from the Docker Hub that we'll discuss later on. But if you go to the Docker Hub, you can see that in the Docker Hub, you can, for example, browse here by typing Microsoft, and you will see that they have their own Docker images that you can use, for example, to run the .NET Core apps. You can also run databases from Docker and any other tool that you can think of. Okay, now let's set another thing, the working directory. So work here, and this one will be called .NET app. And this one is actually, the Microsoft says that this one should be called like this. So this is for the best performance of, or the usage of our .NET Core application. Now let's copy our actual files to the Docker, to the working directory. So we can just say, copy from our bin Docker, which we will actually create in a second. And we want to copy all these files to this working directory. Now let's set up our environment variables. So I'll just say ASP.NET Core URLs, and I will say HTTP. And I want to run my our API at this 5000 port. Another one, ASP.NET Core URLs or environment in that matter. So we'll have the URLs for the port 5000 and we'll have our environment to be just Docker. What does it mean? That it means, well, it will actually load the application settings called appsettings.docker.json that we'll also create in a second. And finally, it's called the entry point. And the entry point will, will actually run our app. So we want to make sure that we'll execute the .NET command and we'll provide our DLL name. So extra API DLL. Before we go further, let's actually create our app settings Docker JSON. And we'll actually fix this later on, but let's just call it app settings Docker. And here we'll specify that we'll be using the database using the Mongo and the RabbitMQ hostname using the RabbitMQ, like this. And you will see later on using Docker Compose how we can actually make this work easily. And the last thing that we need to do, let's open our terminal and let's get back into our API. So I will navigate to my API. And before I actually run or build the image, I need to publish my app. So I can just type publish. I want to publish with the race configuration and I want to publish it to the specific bin Docker um, directory as well. So I will publish my app. And now I can build my image. So I can type docker build. And I want to build the image with the name of axio.api and for the current directory. So as you can see, the image is building. And now I can run this by typing docker run. And if I want to run in the background as a daemon, I will just type minus D. And, but let's say I skip it and I just type minus P. And I want to expose port. Like I said, the Docker is available through the, through the network. It's a container with private environment that is separate from each other. And if you want to talk to your app, you need to expose the port. So I'm just saying there's a public to private port mapping. So I could say, for example, port 80 map to 5,000. So that would mean that my 
container has its private port 5000 and it will be available to the world by port 80. But let's say it will be 5000 to 5000 and I will just provide the image name here like this and I can run my image. And now you can see there is one more issue. And what actually happened? Well, it happened that our CS proj has this definition to all. And this all actually doesn't include any data, like any DLLs. It assumes that DLLs are available in your directory. And we can easily fix this by adding a new property group. So we can say property group, property group. And this one is actually quite long. So let's specify it. And it's called publish with ASP.NET Core Target Manifest. And we'll set it to false. Let's close this one. So property group published with ASP.NET Core Target Manifest. And you should also actually uh, put it into all of your other CSProj files. And let's actually run our publish one more time. And let's rebuild our Docker image. And let's run our Docker image again. Docker run. And as you can see, our app has started. So we can actually open it at our localhost 5000. But we also need to build our other services and we need to actually include our databases and so on. And you'll see in the next video how we can do this using the Docker Compose tool. Because if you were to build all of the images on your own and then set up a network, of course it's possible, but there are tools that were created especially to achieve that. In this video, we talked about the idea behind Docker and how you can build your Docker image and run it for our .NET Core apps.